What's up, guys? Evolutionary.org podcast coming your way. Today we have another steroid profile. This time it's Anadrol. And I got Rick in the house, Steve Smee here. And Rick, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Steve? What's up, guys? So, guys, we're going to rock this episode. Uh, let's get right to it. Let's talk about Anadrol. This is a really, really fun steroid to, to talk about um, because it's a very, very unique steroid in that um, there's a lot of misunderstandings and confusion out there about Andro. So in this podcast, we're going to do something that no one else has ever done. We're going to basically separate the bullshit from the, from the facts and tell you all about Andro. So Andro is uh, oxymethylone, and it's called Andro in the bodybuilding community. Slang term is a ball. A bombs, and there's a reason it's called A bombs because this stuff is wicked, 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 and it works very, very fast. It's basically a very powerful mass and strength building oral anabolic steroid, and but it comes in a host of very strong side effects. This is the stuff if you want to take take it for three or four weeks, you can literally like change your physique on this stuff but that comes with drawbacks. So we're going to talk about all that in this podcast. But first, we'd like to go over the history. Um, so I'm going to bring in Rick, and Rick is going to go over the very, very interesting history of Anadrol. Well, guys, uh, Anadrol is another one of those steroids that was created during the golden era. Anadrol, like most of the anabolic steroids that bodybuilders use today, uh, was originally uh, developed in 1960. Uh, by by Sultan Pharmaceuticals. Osteoporosis and anemia were, were the reasons it was um, it was developed. Other pharmaceutical companies like Syntax and uh, Park Davis also developed uh, oxymethylone under uh, trade names like Anadrol 50 and and Android. It was that Anadrol 50, the one that became real famous, real popular, because of that uh, 50 milligram dosage. It was um, being prescribed all the way up until the 1990s where it just kind of fell out of favor. Uh, uh, Epogen is the drug that replaced Anadrol for uh, its medical use, which it was still being prescribed for anemia. And then Epogen became just a much, much better uh, drug uh, towards, uh, towards, towards that treatment. So Anadrol that had all the side effects, you know, the liver toxicity, and the androgen side effects just fell out of favor. So around the 1990s is when anybody was the last person that was prescribed Anadrol. Uh, still today, uh, some people use it uh, for uh, AIDS, um, for treatment of uh, a wasting from AIDS. And so even, you know, guys with AIDS are still, uh, uh, seem to be using the product, seem to be using the steroid uh, as a treatment. Um, and uh, for the most part today, you're just going to find Anadrol on the underground. It's Schedule 3. It is illegal. It can't uh, be, pre be prescribed. This, from all my research that I found, I, it can't be prescribed uh, nowadays. And uh, that's, uh, that's about it for the history of it. Anadrol is a really cool steroid, and um, it, it's such a fun one to talk about. And what a lot of people don't actually understand about Anadrol, especially those who actually use it or had friends use it, is that it's actually a dihydrotestosterone DHT derivative, but it's got an added 2-hydroxymethylene group, and that makes it extremely anabolic. Anadrol works like all anabolic steroids, so it's going to promote gains in body mass. It's going to increase your strength amazingly fast in such a short time. And of course, it's going to improve protein synthesis, so, you know, it's also going to boost your red blood cell count, and that's going to help you give you more endurance. You know, when you're working out, it's going to feed, you know, feed in your uh, oxygen throughout the body. And, um, you know, that's why one of the medical uses for it was, besides osteoporosis, was anemia. And a lot of uh, anabolic steroids are used for anemia for this reason. Anadrol specifically is extremely good um, because it stimulates something called erythropoiesis, I believe it's pronounced. And that's basically the production of red blood cells. So when you're using Anadrol, really, really good idea on cycle, maybe toward the end of your cycle to go donate blood. And that will not only benefit your community, but it'll also benefit yourself because you get rid of that extra red blood cell count production so you're not straining your organs. 
Um, Rick, you uh, you want to talk about DHT and Anadrol being a DHT and talk, talk a little bit about dihydrotestosterone so people understand exactly what that is. Uh, the hydrotestosterone makes the hair fall off from the top of your head and grow in your body, <laughs> pretty much. Definitely, um, it also enlarges the prostate. It's naturally occurring in the body when your testosterone uh, hormones come into contact with the 5 reductase enzyme and basically becomes a stronger a testosterone that now can't aromatize and now won't become an estrogen. It becomes a stronger testosterone. And definitely uh, you get some uh, DHT side effects from androgen. It is quite androgenic. It is one of the reasons why um, it was, uh, although it was prescribed to some females in extreme cases, it's really not a steroid that should be uh, uh, used by, by females. Now, uh, Anadrol uh, has all of his uh, DHT um, activity without it going through any further conversions. It's, uh, it's basically a, a ADHD derivative um, out of the gate. Even though it, it does have a estrogenic activity on its own, it doesn't need to be converted to anything in order for it to stimulate estrogen receptors. It also has that DHT kind of higher androgenic edge to it. So it's a real interesting steroid in that regard that it's like a, a strong androgen and also an estrogen at the same at the same time without conversion. Yeah, it's a really weird one, and and I think that um, if you if you really boil it down, it, although it's a DHT derivative, it does not aromatize into estrogen. The, the issue is it interferes with estrogen metabolism. So you could, and you probably will have estrogen levels spike in the body. So you're opening yourself up to gynecomastia, bloat, and all that bad stuff, along with the DHT side effects of losing your head hair, prostate enlargement, and, and heart strain. So it's a really weird one because it does both. And uh, you're not going to find any of the main steroids that, that are capable of doing both. So, you know, it, it's one of those things where um, a lot of people have kind of experimented with, with controlling estrogen while on anadrol but the problem is if you use an aromatized inhibitor it's not going to help you because that aromatized inhibitor disables estrogen enzyme but since anadrol is not aromatizing into estrogen that's not going to do anything you see what i'm saying so i think what people have realized through trial and error error is actually using some novadex with the anadrol can help keep those estrogen side effects at bay. I personally, when I'm using Anadrol, um, I just keep it very, very conservative and I keep it a very short time. And I'm able to kind of not worry about both the DHT side effects and the estrogen side effects that come with it. But if you abuse Anadrol, you're in for uh, really, really big trouble. Um, and if you're extremely prone to any of these issues, like losing your head hair, if you've got existing prostate issues, if you've got gynecomastia problems, you probably just want to just go ahead and just avoid anadrol entirely. Because um, this thing, you know, it's a hell of a steroid and it's going to give you a hell of a reaction when it comes to the side effects. Rick, what do you think about, the, um, about that? Well, I've personally stayed away from Anadrol. I've done, I've added it a little bit of it to, to a cycle and I did um, an Anadrol only run. Just done it twice in my lifetime just to say I did because I was curious and wanted to see what it was like. I enjoyed the strength gains from it. Uh, I, the reason I stayed away from it for so long is because I am prone to both losing my hair from steroids and also gynecomastia. And Anadrol will do both. In my particular case, when I used it, I used Novadex because Novadex is Novadex is the only shot you have at mitigating the anadrol estrogenic side effects. Uh, Novadex is going to go and sit on those estrogen receptors and keep the anadrol out of there. Since it's not anadrol is not converting into an estrogen the way dianabol or testosterone would or equipoise would then taking an aromatase inhibitor, like Steve said, would be just a waste of time. So in my particular case, I use Nobodex. I've worked with uh, several guys that, that use Anadrol and love it. 
some, you know, some people, some guys are just lucky enough to be able to use Anadrol and get no, none of the real bad side effects from it and actually gain some really, really good solid mass on it. Um, it will make you bloat a little bit, but you'll, you'll also be gaining some good solid mass along with it, along with a little bit of that, of that bloat. And the Novadex will help you with, um, the Novadex will help you with, uh, with avoiding gynecomastia, but it won't do a lot for the water retention on Anadrol. So you're still, gonna, you're still going to experience some of that. But definitely the more worrisome and, and more permanent side effect would be the gynecomastia. And, and in, in my particular case and, um, and other guys that I've, I've come across that I've worked with as well, Novadex has been just fine uh, to, to keep from uh, developing any kind of gynecomastia side effects from Anadrol. All right, guys. So next, next thing I want to kind of get into is dosages. We kind of touched on it a little bit. Like I said earlier, guys, um, my strategy with Anadrol is running conservative. Um, I've seen some some guys run it really, really high, and they they complain about problems. So, but I find look, twenty five to fifty milligrams. It's it's always been a fifty milligram a day type of steroid. I mean, a lot of the sources sell it in fifty milligram tablets. Um, so. I understand why people want to use 50 milligrams, but I found 25 milligrams has been fantastic. So it's just literally cutting the, the tab in half and just using half that 50 um, has worked beautifully for me. And then you get tremendous results. I mean, it's one of those steroids, um, you know, you use it and like literally after two weeks, you look more full, you're stronger and, you know, you're, you feel that aggression from it. It, it really is a very fast steroid. So you don't have to use a lot of it for results. Um, it's very powerful and very fast. There's a reason it's the slang term is A-bombs um, for sure. I mean, if you're gonna run 75 or 100 milligrams a day, the side effects are just gonna be absolutely brutal. So one of the other side effects we haven't discussed yet is the liver. Um, Anadrol does have a structural change to the 17 carbon position. So it's going to be um, not destroyed by the liver. So it is a C17 alpha alkylated oral. So it is going to be uh, toxic um, to your liver. And that's another side effect you got to watch out for. So if you take it, you should not be consuming alcohol. You should not be using other drugs with it. Otherwise, your liver is going to blow up like, like, you know, like, like crazy. Um, you definitely want to be using your N2 guard whose N2 guard has milk thistle, tuka, other stuff in it that helps with your liver. That makes a huge difference. Um, so you really, really have to be careful um, when it comes to your liver. You want to protect your liver and always make sure you run blower beforehand. If you have any liver issues existing, you don't want to run it. I've seen a lot of guys, especially young guys, end up with jaundice from running Anadrol. It's extremely toxic for your liver, probably one of the more toxic steroids out there. And again, it's because guys use too much of it, 50 milligrams, 7,500 milligrams a day, and they use it for too long. So my advice is literally three or four weeks on this stuff is plenty. If you start doing five, six, seven, even eight weeks, which I've seen guys do, these side effects that we've talked about already are just going to keep multiplying. So I would not do that. I always tell guys cap it at four weeks. I mean, if you can't get tremendous results on Anadrol after four weeks, either your Anadrol is bunk or you're simply not, you simply do not have your diet and training on point period, because it's just, there's just no way that you won't see tremendous results even after just two weeks on this stuff. Um, what do you think, Rick? What, what's your advice about dosages and how long? You know, it seems that guys found that sweet spot at 50 megs with Anadrol. It really seems to be just that, that sweet spot. Some guys go over 75 megs. I've heard as much as 100, like you said. I would just run the, the 50 if you're, gonna, if you're already going to mess with it. Run the 50. Run good liver support and to guard. And make sure to take your Novadex with it and go. See how, see how it does. I think, look, it's, it's been 50 mix has been the, the known effective dose for this steroid for forever since it's been around, really, since it, since guys started abusing it. Uh, we all found it, that that's really where, where the sweet spot is. Yeah, as far as running it at length, 
yeah, four to six weeks. I mean, I, I would even go as far as six weeks. I've ran uh, some pretty harsh orals as, as long as six and eight weeks before. And as long as you're taking some liver support and the rest of your lifestyle is in order. Like Steve said, no drinking or you're not coming in from a history of being a heavy drinker or anything like that. You should be able to hang right in there just fine. It's, you know, diet and training is going to be really key on, on Anadrol. It gets a little bit hard to eat a lot on it. It does cause a little bit of, of nausea and, and you don't, you don't feel like eating as much when you're on it. So it, you do have to kind of force feed yourself a little bit and maybe deal with some of the, of the nausea that, that comes from it. It also makes you quite a bit kind of lethargic and sleepy. And we've discussed that in the podcast a couple of times. Um, you get that from either your liver being uh, strained. And it is also a side effect of growth. When you're really, when you're really growing through that growth spur and putting, stacking on those pounds and, and you, know, you see a different guy in front of the mirror every morning, you're going to be pretty kind of sleepy and, and tired throughout the day. On Anadrol, you tend to get it for both reasons. Your liver is getting, uh, is getting quite a bit of toxicity, and you're also uh, growing a lot. You're going to put on a lot of pounds on, on Anadrol, and not just on your frame, but also on the bench, on the squat rack, on your curls. The weight's just going to you know, be able to throw the weight around pretty pretty easily. When I ran my Anadrol only cycle, uh, which I did hit the, the 50 mark, that's what I noticed was just the strength gains on it were, were incredible. Everything just seemed a lot lighter. And you have to just watch yourself because your muscles are, are quite a bit stronger, but it takes a while longer for your tendons um, and joints to catch up. And you want to make sure to not hurt yourself uh, doing some big lifts if you do partake in, in any uh, Anadrol usage. Hey guys, um, listen, user results, I'm going to tell you something. Um, what's fascinating about Anadrol, when I use it, I use it a couple times. I mean, we're talking, I put on like 10 or 15 pounds, like within like three or four weeks, no joke. Um, you know, it's not going to be a um, quality gains. It's going to be more of a mass um, because you got to remember, most of your muscle is made up of water. So um, don't expect it to put on 10, 15 pounds of pure muscle tissue because that's not going to happen. So, you know, you'll notice you blow up a lot. If you're an endurance athlete and you use this stuff, you're going to basically um, regret it because <laughs> you can imagine how bad your um, endurance will take a hit using this stuff. If you're like an MMA fighter, if you're a boxer, any of that stuff. Really bad idea to use uh, Anadrol. Those of you who are interested in just getting bigger, stronger in a short amount of time, Anadrol is going to be one of the better ones for you to use. And those of you who don't want to inject, Anadrol is going to be a good one to use. Another good thing about Anadrol, we're going to kind of talk about stacking, is that Anadrol is one of the best steroids out there that you can use by itself. You don't need, nor are you, should I, do I recommend you stack anything with Anadrol? Because Anadrol itself is a DHT derivative. It gives you some estrogen action. It's androgenic. It's anabolic. It'll boost strength. It'll boost muscle mass. It'll fill up your, 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 the water of your muscles. So it does it all. You don't need to stack anything with it. And if you start stacking stuff with Anadrol, you're just going to add to side effects. So Anadrol is one of those steroids. It's an oral. If you're going to use it in a stack, you can use it to kickstart the cycle, very low dosage. But I highly recommend you use it by itself, four to six weeks. That's it. And you get tremendous results. So, Rick, do you want to talk a little bit about stacking and then also give us the cost and how easy it is to get? Anadrol can be stacked with uh, several, several different things, but uh, a good way to do it, like Steve said, run it on its own. If you want to run it with something to have something to pick you up as soon as you have to uh, end the oral uh, kick with it, right? Equipoise. Equipoise is great. 
a little bit of testosterone, but then again, now you're getting into uh, into the realm of having to take a, a, an aromatase inhibitor with, along with the testosterone. Um, so definitely, I like EQ a little bit better for it. Uh, we discussed primobolin on the last uh, on the last compound podcast. Primobolin will pick you right up. Um, you could also maybe when once the once the cycle's done, uh, go into something to help you get drier, like Masteron. So any of those I think would work, but I think just the EQ, the EQ would be nice. You uh, you can start taking the shots of EQ right around the same time you you start your anadrol, and by the time you're you're set to get off the anadrol, the EQ would have built up from that long ester, and it'll help pick you up and it'll help you maintain some of that progress you made on the anadrol. So um, I, I like EQ uh, for it uh, quite a bit to, to to work with the kickstart. Um, and yeah, a Novadex, Novadex, Novadex. It is the tamoxifen. It's the only shot you have at at making sure that you don't have a gynecomastia from the anadrol. Now, some guys aren't prone to having uh, the gyno side effect from anadrol. Anadrol is really one of those drugs that some guys can tolerate quite well, and then there are others that can't. But if you're worried about gyno, Novadex is, is your best bet with it. All right, guys, I think we covered everything. Let's just talk about women use. Uh, Anadrol is not a good choice for women. It's just too strong. It's too toxic. It's got too much side effects. So this is definitely a, a steroid just for males. So if you're a female listening to this, I, I, it's really not a good idea to mess with Anadrol. So, and, um, you know, that pretty much covers it, Rick. I mean, um, that pretty much does it for Anadrol, guys. If you have any further questions, feel free to hit me up on the forum, Steve SMI. And we will talk to you guys next time. We'll have another compound coming your way. Have a good one. Have a good one, Steve. Have a good one, guys. Guys, this has been Require Legal Disclaimer. We are only sharing our experience from years of steroid use. We are not doctors, and none of what we say should be regarded as medical advice. Always check with your doctor before taking any drugs or starting any training program.